Grim Fairy Tale, with original music by Lilia Petulia, Snow White and Rose Red. Once upon a time, a poor widow lived in a little hut. In front of the hut was a garden, wherein grew two rose trees, one with white roses and one with red roses. She had two children who were just like the rose trees. One was called Snow White and the other Rose Red. They were as kind and gentle, busy and cheerful as any two children in the world. Only Snow White was quieter than Rose Red. Rose Red loved to run in the meadows and fields, seeking flowers and chasing butterflies. Snow White preferred to stay at home with her mother, helping with the spinning and weaving and cleaning of hearth and home. The two children loved each other dearly, and when Snow White said, We shall never leave each other, Rose Red replied, Never, as long as we live. The girls often went roaming through the forest alone to gather berries and herbs, and no beast did them any harm, but came close to them trustfully. The rabbit would eat a cabbage leaf from their hands, the mother deer grazed by their side, the stag leapt merrily by them, and the birds sat upon the branches and sang to their heart's content. Sometimes the girls wandered far and wide, visiting their favourite trees and streams, and playing in the sunshine. They simply lay down together under the trees and fell asleep.
after they had slept the night in the forest, the morning sun came shining through the trees. They woke up and saw a beautiful child in a shining white dress standing near their bed. He looked kindly at them and went away into the forest. And when they looked around, they saw that they had been sleeping close to a steep cliff and would have fallen off if they had walked only a few steps further in the darkness. Their mother told them that it was their angel who watches over all children. On winter evenings, when the snowflakes fell, their mother said, Go, Snow White, and bolt the door. And Snow White went and bolted the door shut. Then they went to the heart, and their mother read aloud from a large book as the girls listened and spun and wove their wool. One evening, as they were sitting together, someone knocked on the door. Quick, Rose Red, said the mother. Open the door. It must be a traveller seeking shelter. Rose Red ran and pushed back the bolt. Who should walk in but a big black bear? Rose Red screamed and sprang back, and Snow White hid behind her mother's skirts. But the bear said, Don't be afraid. I will not harm you. I am half frozen and only want to warm myself beside the fire. Poor bear, said the mother. Lie down by the fire. Only take care that you do not burn your coat. Then she cried, Snow White, Rose Red, come out. The bear will do you no harm. So... They both came out, and after a little while, they were not afraid of him. The bear said, Children, children, knock some snow out of my coat. So they brushed and swept, swept and brushed the bear's fur until it was all clean. And then he stretched himself beside the fire, and growled happily. It was not long before the children played tricks on their clumsy guest. They tugged his hair with their hands. They put their feet upon his back and rolled him round and round. Or they took a little stick and beat him and teased him, and when he growled, they laughed. But the bear 
took it all in good part. Only when they were too rough, he called out, Snow White, Rose Red, will you beat your wooer dead? Henceforth, the bear came every evening, and the doors were never locked until their black friend had arrived. When spring came and all was green outside, the bear said to Snow White, Now I must go away and cannot come back for a whole summer. Where are you going, dear bear? asked Snow White. I must go to the forest and guard my treasure from the wicked dwarfs. In winter, when the earth is frozen hard, they must stay below in their caves and cannot dig their way through the ground. But now that the sun has thawed the earth, they will break out and come to pry and steal. And what they get into their caves does not see daylight again. Snow White was sorry at his leaving. As she unlocked the door and a bear hurried out, he caught against the bolt and a piece of his hairy coat was torn off. It seemed to Snow White that she saw gold shining through, but the bear ran quickly away and was soon out of sight behind the trees. <laughs> Later, the mother sent the children into the forest to fetch firewood. There, they found a huge tree which lay fell to the ground. And close by the trunk was a dwarf jumping backwards and forwards, forwards and backwards on the grass. The end of his long beard was caught in a crack of the tree and the dwarf was hopping about like a dog tied to a rope. He glared at the girls. Why do you stand there? Can't you come here and help me? What are you doing, little man? asked Rose Red. You silly, prime goose, answered the dwarf. I was splitting this tree to get a little wood for cooking. I chopped my axe into the trunk, but the cursed blade sprung out and the tree caught my beautiful white beard. Now I cannot pull it out, and I cannot get away. And you silly, sleek, milk-faced girls laugh pooey how odious you are. The children tried very hard to pull his beard out. They pulled, and they pulled, but it was no use. The beard was caught fast. I'll run and fetch someone, said Rose Red. You senseless sheep's head, snarled the dwarf. You are already too, too many for me. Can't you think of something better? <laughs> Don't be impatient, said Snow White kindly. I will help you. And she took a pair of scissors from her pocket and snip snap cut the end of his beard. 
As soon as the dwarf was free, he grabbed a bag which lay beside the roots of a tree and which was full of gold. Grumbling and muttering to himself, he said, Uncouth people to cut off a piece of my fine beard. Bad luck to you. And he swung the bag upon his back and stomped off. <laughs> later, Snow White and Rose Red went fishing. As they came near the river, they saw something like a large grasshopper jumping and jerking towards the water and back away from the water. They found it was the dwarf. What are you doing? asked Rose Red. You don't want to go swimming, do you? But I'm not such a fool. Can't you see that this accursed fish wants to pull me in? I was merely fishing and minding my own business when a gust of wind tangled up my beard with the fishing line. Just then, a huge fish took my hook and now looked at me. The dwarf was not strong enough to pull the fish out, and the fish kept dragging the dwarf towards the river. He clutched onto reeds and rushes, but it was no use. The fish was stronger than the dwarf. The girls tried to untangle his beard from the line, but all in vain. Beard and line were hopelessly tangled together. There was nothing left to do but to bring out the scissors and snip snap cut the dwarf's beard off. Is that civil, you toadstool, to disfigure a man's face? Was it not enough to clip off the tip of my beautiful beard? Now you have cut off the best part. I cannot let myself be seen by my people. I wish you would run the soles off your shoes. Then he grabbed a sack of pearls which lay in the rushes and dragged it away. Not long afterwards, the mother sent Snow White and Rose Red to town to buy needles and thread and laces and ribbons. across a heath, upon which huge rocks and boulders lay strewn about. The 
girls looked up and saw a large eagle circling in the air high above them. slowly round and round. It sank lower and lower, then suddenly dived behind a rock. They heard a loud, piteous cry, and running up, they saw that the eagle had seized the nasty dwarf and was going to fly away with him. The children took hold of the little man and pulled and pulled so long that the eagle let the dwarf go. As soon as the dwarf was free, he cried, Could you not pull more carefully? You dragged at my brown coat, and now it's all torn to pieces and full of holes. You clumsy, sausage-fingered creatures. Then he grabbed a sack full of diamonds and slipped under the rock into his hole. <laughs> then Snow White and Rose Red went on their way to town. On their way back across the heath, the two girls surprised the dwarf, counting his bag of precious stones. The evening sun shone on the brilliant jewels. They glittered and sparkled so beautifully that the children stood still and stared at them. Why do you stand gaping like silly apes? cried the dwarf, his ashen grey face copper red with rage. Suddenly a loud growling was heard, and a black bear came trotting out of the forest. The dwarf sprung up in fright and cried, Dear Mr. Bear, spare me. I will give you all my treasures. Look, the beautiful jewels lying there. Grant me my life. What do you want with such a slender little fellow as I? Come, take these two wicked girls. They are tender morsels for you, fat as quails. For mercy's sake, eat them, not me. The bear took no heed of the dwarf's words, but gave the wicked creature a single blow with his paw. And he was never seen again. Snow White and Rose Red ran away, but the bear called, Snow White, Rose Red, do not be afraid. Wait, I will come with you. The two girls recognized his voice and waited. 
When he came up to them, his bare skin suddenly fell off, and he stood there, a handsome man, clothed all in gold. I am a king's son, he said. I was bewitched by that wicked dwarf who had stolen my treasures. He changed me into a savage bear, but now I am freed by his death from enchantment. to the bear prince and rose red to his brother. <laughs> they divided the great treasure between them which the dwarf had gathered into his cave. The old mother lived peacefully and happily for many years with her children. She took the two rose trees with her and they stood before her window. Every year they bore the most beautiful roses, white and red.
Once upon a time, a poor widow lived in a little hut. In front of the hut was a garden wherein grew two rose trees, one with white roses and one with red roses. She had two children who were just like the rose trees. One was called Snow White and the other Rose Red. They were as kind and gentle, busy and cheerful as any two children in the world. Only Snow White was quieter than Rose Red. Rose Red loved to run in the meadows and fields, seeking flowers and chasing butterflies. Snow White preferred to stay at home with her mother, helping with the spinning and weaving and cleaning of hearth and home. The two children loved each other dearly, and when Snow White said, We shall never leave each other, Rose Red replied, Never, as long as we live. The girls often went roaming through the forest alone to gather berries and herbs, and no beast did them any harm, but came close to them trustfully. The rabbit would eat a cabbage leaf from their hands, the mother deer grazed by their side, the stag leapt merrily by them, and the birds sat upon the branches and sang to their heart's content. Sometimes the girls wandered far and wide, visiting their favourite trees and streams, and playing in the sunshine. stayed too late in the forest and night came, they simply lay down together under the trees and fell asleep. Once, after they had slept the night in the forest, the morning sun came shining through the trees.
they woke up and saw a beautiful child in a shining white dress standing near their bed. He looked kindly at them and went away into the forest. And when they looked around, they saw that they had been sleeping close to a steep cliff and would have fallen off if they had walked only a few steps further in the darkness. Their mother told them that it was their angel who watches over all children. On winter evenings, when the snowflakes fell, their mother said, Go, Snow White, and bolt the door. And Snow White went and bolted the door shut. Then they went to the heart. And their mother read aloud from a large book as the girls listened and spun and wove their wool. One evening, as they were sitting together, someone knocked on the door. Quick, Rose Red, said the mother. Open the door. It must be a traveller seeking shelter. Rose Red ran and put 